Go ahead, Coach Bongo, please. Sam Adams looks like he's gotten more comfortable this fall. Just how has how have you seen him progress? Uh, you know, Sam is, um, you know, obviously he's been out. I guess we're going into a second year being here. And uh, it's been really fun watching him develop. Uh, that's one of the strong suits of Sam. He's, he's a really smart kid, uh, pay, pays attention to detail and protection and things like that. And he is deceivingly really smooth and athletic, catches the ball well. Um, you know, over this course of, you know, the first, I've been calling it the first quarter of fall camp. I'm impressed with what I'm seeing. And I think uh, we'll be impressed with him for years to come. How much easier does it make it to have a line like that to play, you know, behind? Oh, I mean, obviously, Coach Huff does a great job and, you know, getting you know those 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 type of bodies in here who can actually move people you know off the line of scrimmage and giving the backs you know spaces and creases to hit uh it's been a lot of fun it's just you know one of the things that we always have to work on is just the patience piece of it uh coming out of the backfield and helping those guys to develop and set blocks down the field but definitely as we continue to move forward through camp i just watch the development of really our whole offensive unit continue to just grow over the rest of camp you got all these uh, veteran backs that are back that are know know the routine, been out there on game day. Um, is Jaden Sunday going to push his way into that group? That's a very good question. I mean, it's so early in camp. Um, I do think he is a kid, you know, who showed some really good flashes in spring ball. And, you know, if he stays on track as far as learning the playbook and uh, continue to, you know, develop in protection and just technique overall, uh, you know, I just think, you know, with him and Sam just being such young guys and not really doing much, you know, the year before, uh, I'm ex those guys just have to develop. I do think this, um, you guys have seen it, you know, the guys have been coming to practice that Javion is a kid that's very explosive. He has some natural talent and now we're just trying to hone it in to where his technique and fundamental can really help him excel and get to the next level. With Rich, you know, we've obviously seen him for a couple of years now. What is just, what's the next step in his maturation with you guys? Oh, that's a good question. You know, Rich, um, you know, coming out of spring ball, I think when it came to just being focused and really trying to set himself apart in a, in a group full of running backs, uh, the mindset that he's taken uh, going, going into spring ball through the summer and coming into fall camp has been really special and really noticeable, uh, not only by me, but the other coaches and I think the teammates as well. So when you talk about uh, – you know, what does he need to do to continue uh, to take the next step? I just think it's going to always come down to consistency uh, for him at the position. He's a tough runner. Um, he's getting better and uh, better in his uh, protection technique. He knows the play. So his consistency and staying focused over the long term is really what I'm excited about. Uh, I think he's one of those guys that, you know, who had success early and he continue. And sometimes those guys tend to uh, press to do the next big thing. And if he can just become consistent, you know, day after day and play after play, I think we'll really be excited about him this season. I think you've answered this in terms of Rick. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you, what do you need to see now from the running backs in the second quarter of camp? But it sounds like consistency and being patient. Yeah. Um, I do think um, when it comes to the group, when you have so many talented guys, which, um, you know, I'm fortunate enough to have the type of talent and the offense is fortunate enough to have the type of talent in that room. I do think, it, you, you know, you're, it's like you're trying to figure out which car you want to pull out the garage, right? And it's like, oh, all these cars are really nice. Um, but I do feel like when it comes to us overall, um, the way we, sh we have to complement the offense is being consistent when our number is called to, to run the ball. I do think we have to uh, truly be a threat in the pass game. So if you if the, if it was those two things that I would start with, kind of going into this next part, we have to be uh, consistent in the run game. I think about one of the things that has led our run game over the past since we've been here is guys that consistently can gain us yards, and we're not taking those busts in the backfield. Some of it things happen, but at the same time, it can't be on us. So I would start there, and I think the second thing is we have guys that can catch the ball out the backfield and we need to use them as a weapon. And I, I talk about it, you know, uh, a lot with those guys. When our number is called, it's not going to be a clean ball. Sometimes the quarterback is going to be in duress, but us catching the ball out the backfield has to be a weapon for our offense to keep drives going and to hurt defenses. So that's the next two things I'm really looking forward to as we move forward before the next scrimmage. On that, on that subject, it seems like Cam Davis is a pretty fluid pass catcher. Has he always been that way or is that something he's kind of developed over time with you guys? 
Repeat the last part, I'm sorry. Cam Davis always been that fluid of a pass catcher, or is that something he's more developed over time? No, I mean, he's a, he's a, he's has good hands. I mean, he's always pretty much had pretty good hands in our room. Um, I just think, you know, the consistency of how Coach Donovan is trying to use us and uh, some of the opportunities we've been getting uh, versus our defense to catch the ball out the backfield. Um, Cam just seems to be in there when it happens a little bit more than other guys. But I do think we have a solid group uh, of pass catchers, and I think we need to do that. But to answer your question, he's he's been able to catch. So. The second year of this uh, playbook, is it becoming a little bit easier for those guys to uh, get, it, get it locked in? I would say the famili familiarity with the playbook is what has made it a little bit easier. You know, um, they've kind of heard it. You know, you got to think about it. Last year, it was, you know, a lot of Zoom and things like that, you know, going into, um, you know, OT well, we started OTAs. The next thing you know, we're on Zoom forever. And then we kind of um, had to do the Zoom thing for the most part, you know, kind of going into the season. Then we finally came back. So I just think it wasn't as natural. Uh, a progression of how you want to teach guys a playbook without your walkthroughs and things like that. And I think there's something to be said about meeting in person. You know, that's what everybody uh, has been talking about. But as you, to answer your question, I think, you know, just getting back to almost the normalcy of being in a meeting room and getting out on the field and doing walkthroughs and stuff like that has really helped the offense, our team, um, as well as, you know, just everybody in the program kind of take that next step where we think we need to be. With Rich, it almost seemed like last year his carries kind of diminished and in spring ball, Jimmy kind of insinuated maybe, I don't know if I'm reading it wrong, maybe a message was being sent. Maybe he wasn't doing things the right way, but he's gone out of his way to really rave about what Rich has done to transform his body and get better. Can you maybe talk about the situation at the end of the season last year and what he's done to this point? Oh, I, I think it goes back to how I answered the first question. Um, I think, you know, just in the room, um, when it comes to uh, guys getting on the field, it's always going to come back to consistency, right? So are you consistent, consistently showing up, uh, you know, when we're going against the scouts and we're getting ready for a game plan? Are you consistently consistently showing up in the weight room how you should? Are you consistent, consistently, um, you know, making plays out there on the field? And I will say this. Um, you know, I'm not going to harp a, bu a bunch on last year, um, but I do feel like as we've moved forward from spring ball through the summer uh, to where we're at right now in fall camp, Rich has shown that he wants to be consistently good and take the next step. I do uh, agree with Coach Lake. Um, you know, he's gotten trimmed a little bit of weight. He's running harder. He's, you know, he looks a little bit faster. He looks a little bit more twitchier. And I, I think the mindset is such a big thing, especially for these, these young guys. Um, so to answer your question, we're happy with where, how consistent he, consistent he is right now. Uh, I hope that helps. How much of a luxury is it to have Sean and Kamari as super seniors effectively? It's, I mean, it's good just because, you know, those guys, you're talking about guys that are six-year seniors, right? So they've, and both of those guys have kind of been through both ends of it, you know, coming in, you know, Sean being a highly recruited guy, and then, you know, kind of waffling around and not playing some to, you know, finding his way to contribute some, you know, Kamari not playing really at all, and then, you know, kind of working his way into being kind of that Swiss Army knife for us. Um, it's good to have those guys in because they – are doing a great job of taking some of the younger guys aside and trying to help those guys progress a little bit faster when it comes to taking notes, how you pay attention at practice, how you attack when we're going through individuals and things like that. So that's a luxury that we do have with having those older guys that have kind of been here since you know their day one to now, whatever day it is in their sixth year. Um, we have almost somewhat of you know player coach type guys who can kind of tell them this is not the road you want to go down or continue doing that because that's the way it's supposed to look. That said, you've got all these running backs and typically if this pandemic hadn't happened, Sean and Kamari would have graduated. Mm -hmm. and, and so there's a natural progression there where you graduate them and you keep the young guys happy, move them up. Well, now you kind of got this log jam a little bit where they, they came back and you kind of got to honor them because they came back, but you got to move the young guys up. Were you wondering how that was going to work, uh, you know, to keep everybody happy? You know, that's a very good question. I think the thing um, you think about that, like you got a big group of guys and you're trying to figure out, OK, how can we make this work to, you know, like you keep everybody happy. Nobody's ever happy. Remember that. <laughs> um, but with that being said, I think the big thing is um, is being is the communication. 
you know, the communication of the guys in the room understanding the best guys who are consistent are going to play. Uh, obviously, you want to find as many roles as you can for guys to get out there and contribute and feel a part of what we're building here at the University of Washington. But at the same time, I think at the end of the day, we're trying to make sure we are putting the best players on the field uh, come September to go out there and win football games. And I think we just are continually continually evaluating. Um, nothing is set in stone at this point. So um, guys are going out there truly trying to figure out, okay, where can I fit in uh, to help not only myself uh, take the next step, but to help this offense take the next step. Um, I think it's really important for guys not to worry about the guy sitting on my left and on my right, but make sure, uh, especially in a room like ours, I'm doing everything I can to become the best player that I can for myself and not for anybody else. Right. Go oh, go ahead. Uh, the special teams coordinator part of, of the gig now with all the potential you have in the punt return game and the kick return game, I wonder if there are any guys standing out to you and, and what you're thinking about as that progresses through camp. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, with getting the four games that we had last year and, you know, we had the one big punt return with uh, Trent last year that was pretty good. You know, I think overall, and I hope you guys agree, I think the talent level that we have, you know, just across the board, offense, defense, and the guys we're going to be able to use on special teams will be really interesting um, to say that, any guys are standing out like this guy's definitely standing out. I don't want to say that, but what I will say is uh, I think as a coaching staff, me as a special teams coordinator, I'm excited for the talent that we do have on this team where we should be a dominant force on special teams this season. Thank you, Coach. Yep.